talking about prompt hierarchies. So a lot of the time I get questioned, well, what are prompts and why do we need them? So prompts help with learning. They typically go in right after the instruction. So if I were to say to Shira, come here, which didn't do anything, or she doesn't know what come here even means, I want to be able to prompt her. So I might say, come here, and then grab her hand and have her come. That me, in essence, of just grabbing your hand is a prompt. Now, the important thing about prompts is that they absolutely help kids learn. But another thing that we need to remember about prompts is that we always, always need to be thinking about how we fade prompts out. We want to be able to fade prompts because kids need to learn this stuff and they need to know it later on without the presence of prompts. So eventually, Sharon needs to respond to, come here, and she comes without me holding her hand, without me having to come and get her, that type of thing. So one type of prompt that we use is what's called a physical prompt. A physical prompt is us actually touching a student. Um, now obviously we don't put physical prompts in for every student. Uh, some students don't like to be touched. Um, other teams are very large and um, you know just by putting in a physical prompt um, we want to really emphasize to this, the therapist that you know a physical prompt isn't meant to harm a student. It's not meant to be squeezing tight or anything like that. It's really meant as a guide to help them learn. So the very first step of prompting with a physical prompt is what we call full physical guidance. Full physical guidance would actually be you know full both hands on the shoulder. Let's go. Often taught from behind. Um, if we're doing some type of printing task, it would be like a hand over hand. So we have the student's hand and we're really guiding the pencil. That's what a full physical prompt is. Then what we want to do is obviously fade that prompt back. There's steps to fading. We wouldn't go from hand over hand to absolutely nothing. We need to be able to fade that systematically. So with a printing task, for instance, we would go from full hand over hand to something like hand over wrist, or maybe it's a hand over hand to something like this with a lighter touch, and then move our touch back to the wrist. And then from there, we would move it back to the elbow and maybe Shira might just need a slight elbow prompt and then something to the shoulder, so hand over shoulder. Now, interestingly enough, printing isn't done from the shoulder, it's done from the wrist. But some kids are so prompt dependent that they even need, need just a slight touch on the shoulder helps them print. Um, so if we need to fade it that systematically, we fade it that systematically. For life skills, for instance, if we are doing um, dressing or teaching a student to cook, teaching an older student how to cook, obviously. Um, we can also utilize physical guidance. So again, we would teach from behind and, you know, we would teach with, uh, you know, full physical guidance, which would be a full prompt, you know, teaching them using their hands, that type of thing. And then we would fade out again, hand over hand, hand over wrist, hand over elbow, hand over shoulder. Then that's not enough. You know, then it's about just you know, hovering back and then taking small steps back, two feet, five feet, eight feet in the doorway, and then hopefully independent so that students are able to dress by themselves, cook by themselves, eat by themselves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The reason for the prompts is that we want to get in before they make a mistake. So if they make a mistake and then we correct them, they might keep repeating that pattern. But if we can get in there before they make a mistake with a prompt to make it airless, then they're learning that sequence more uh, correctly the first time.